caution will bring you into spoiler territory for the media displayed on screen. Timestamps are gifted in the description and comment section. Your discretion is advised. So I have some thoughts on Black Widow, a movie that I guess was supposed to be released in 2014. Uh, we're finally seeing it in 2021. <laughs> Thanks, sexism. <laughs> so that's already the interesting point about this movie, is, uh, this is a movie that was supposed to be made back in, like, what, I guess, phase two of, of Marvel? And it's now made in phase four? And then the other interesting thing is this is made after Endgame, which, spoilers for Endgame, but I kinda don't care, because that movie's a couple years old already. Um, Black Widow dead. She dead. She she gone. She died. She died in Endgame, and now she has her movie. Yeah. So honestly, uh, what do I think of Black Widow 2021? It is the definition of a mixed bag, to be honest. Was it worth getting delayed an entire year so it could be played in theaters? Probably not. It could have probably just been thrown onto Disney Plus. Everything would have been fine. Was it even worth making this movie? I'm not entirely sure. So the thing that makes this movie a little interesting, to me at least, is just the fact that, like, Black Widow was a character that, as far as I'm aware, not a lot of people were big fans of, or just people kind of saw her as, like, a do-nothing character, like, there was really no point, but I found her kind of interesting, or at least I was just kind of intrigued about her. And so, yeah, finding out that Black Widow finally gets her own movie, I was a little... Uh, interested to watch it, and then given how it's coming out so fucking late, uh, a little more interested to see what they would do, and obviously they go for the prequel kind of vibe, which has its problems, like the many a times where it tries to make you think that Black Widow is going to die, but then you kind of already know that she's not. <laughs> and I'm not a big Marvel guy, like I watched... And to be honest, I probably watched all of the Marvel movies at least once, except for uh, Captain Marvel. I know that one I've avoided. But, you know, overall, not a lot of them really wowed me. I mean, the first Iron Man, obviously, and then the first Avengers was cool. Guardians of the Galaxy was kind of neat. And it also took me a little over a year until I watched Infinity War, and I had that spoiled to me the fucking day it came out, because I gave barely any shits about Marvel movies or the MCU, I just didn't really care. And I mentioned this all to say that a lot of this movie plays out, I believe, after Civil War. Like, they all, the, there's a constant mention of the Avengers, there's a constant mention of, I'm I'm guessing the the ending to Civil War. I say I'm guessing because again, that was one of the Marvel movies I never watched because it was a, it was labeled after a it was labeled under a Captain America movie, and I could give zero shits about him. So a lot of the movie is constantly bringing up the Avengers. It's constantly talking about you know Black Widow not being a part of it or you know shit like that, and so that's one factor about it. Uh, a little bit of part of it is it plays as kind of a origin story of Black Widow, which was kind of neat, and that just kind of goes away, like, a little bit for, like, most of the movie. The first 15 minutes of the movie are probably the best of it, if I'm being entirely honest. It's, it's, it's so far from being a Marvel movie that I genuinely thought I was watching the wrong movie. <laughs> At least to someone who's not big on, like, the Marvel lore, even, like, the MCU lore, I... Nothing about the first 15 minutes, like, screamed Marvel, except for the fucking opening title crawl, and, like, of the Marvel logo. Other than that, uh, it, it didn't even, like, give me the vibe of an MCU movie that I'm used to watching. It was just kind of like a completely different movie in the way it was shot, the way it looked. Even during the title screen of Black Widow, that shit played out like a fucking Shane Dawson documentary. <laughs> In just the way it's edited, it, like, cuts from fucking photos of Bill Clinton to video footage of pigs to fucking missiles launching. It was just, it was kind of weird. 
but the first 15 minutes were pretty enjoyable for the most part. Um, and then afterwards, that's kind of where the movie begins this whole mixed bag thing. There are some moments I enjoy. I do like the inclusion of Natasha's sister. I can't fucking remember her name because I'm very bad with uh, names in general. But she was kind of cool. I liked this one scene where they were in a uh, they were in a shop and she's like kind of poking fun at the way uh, Natasha does her little landing. It, it was kind of like it, it was a self-aware moment for the MCU. And I, I just enjoy self-aware moments in movies in general. Russian Captain America was kind of neat. He was he was fun to be around. Um, I I I don't know what else to talk about other than the fact that like a lot of this movie was kind of bland. Uh, then there's some other moments where like you know I'm getting a laugh or you know something kind of looks cool. Um, then, of course, you got the fight scenes, which I think are probably the worst part about this movie. There's also, um, a lot of shots that kind of look like, uh, shit. Like, the one where Natasha's hanging off a bridge because the robot dude, uh, shot her. I, I guess I should say robot girl, but that's, that's revealed later. But anyway, she got shot and she's hanging off a bridge. And when the car gets off the bridge, you, you, you could, you could tell that wasn't Scarlett Johansson. You, you could tell that wasn't even a person. That, that was just a fake thing. When uh, Scarlett Johansson and her character's sister is falling off the... Falling through the air, that shit looks fucking abysmal. It looks like DC CGI. Like, not even... Not even Prime DC. Like, like uh, Justice League DC CGI. It, it, it's, it's that bad. What I'm getting at is, god fucking damn it, a lot of this shit looks uh, so obscenely fake. And that's kind of disappointing given how a lot of Marvel, like, Marvel kind of reigned itself with having the good CGI. Going back to the Natasha Bridge scene when she gets shot with the missile, I don't know who, I don't know what happened, I don't know what take was chosen, I don't know what uh, Scarlett Johansson was told, but the movement she does in the car looks... Kind of, kind of bad. That's not to say that I hate the movie. Um, I did bring up the robot girl. Um, when she has the mask on, uh, it looks very 2014. It remind, it like immediately reminded me of uh, the fucking year of the skulls, uh, where you had fucking caught ghost come out, and it just it it gave me that kind of vibe. 2014 was the last good year I ever had in my life, so uh, I appreciate the nostalgia. And I'm also an edgy boy that I like skulls. So I do like the design of the evil villain. Um, and uh, I thought it was kind of cool. I thought it was, uh, you know, the the fact that it could immediately, like, train itself based off of who you are and, like, replicate. And it's like looking in a mirror. I thought that was kind of cool. It led to some moments that I wish were done better, which is basically a lot of the combat. Storytelling-wise, it's just a basic MCU movie. I mean, we all know that like Marvel movies and the MCU is very formulaic and that's kind of the case here for the most part. It's got its some emotional scenes that I didn't really feel much during. It's got some emotional scenes that I could kind of feel myself. It's just the standard Marvel shit. It, it's, it's again just kind of going with just the Marvel movies that I kind I, I think were what led me to not really care that much about Marvel. <laughs> It's not an Infinity War, it's not your Endgame, it's not your Iron Man, it's like, uh, I don't know, I can't even think of a Marvel movie to compare it to. It's just a generic movie that has some good parts about it, and it has some pretty bad parts about it, and uh, that's where I think I, I, I line it with It's a Mixed Bag. Scarlett Johansson, as usual, is great. Uh, like I said, I like, you know, I like a lot of the characters, but it was just... Sometimes the fight scenes looked abysmal, sometimes the CGI looked very fake. Um, uh, but then sometimes, you know, I'm getting a laugh out of the, the fucking Russian Captain America, or, you know... The, the scene of Scarlet and her sister, uh, you know, sitting at the picnic table talking about family. That was kind of a nice, wholesome family moment. It's funny, the movie kind of has its best scene during the beginning and the end. Um, obviously, the first 15 minutes, I very much enjoyed. But then, of course, there's the post credit scene, which I thought was pretty nice. It was pretty emotional, you know, having a jump time to post-endgame and having uh, Natasha's sister 
you know, mourn over the death. Uh, it does get ruined with uh, the normal fucking MCU shit where they have to set up a sequel that I will undoubtedly not watch. It, it's kind of cool that it was made. It's cool that Black Widow finally got her, her movie. Uh, I do think there's a couple moments where... Because this was brought up, uh, Scarlett Johansson brought up that uh, in her debut of Iron Man 2... Uh, she was fine with that at the time, but she's a little regretful over how overly sexualized that character is, and it's... I haven't watched 2014 Avengers uh, since 2014, but I'm pretty sure she was probably over-sexualized there as well, because that was a Joss Whedon movie, and probably even more sexualized in Age of Ultron, because that was a Joss Whedon movie. So that was kind of what we were leading into, was like, oh, is this going to be a less sexualized version? And for the most part, it is, but there are occasionally, like, a Scarlett Johansson ass shot, like, a few times. I thought the first time was kind of weird, but then when it kind of... Kept doing it, like, maybe two or three more times. It was like, um, what? Why? But again, overall, mixed bag. I'd probably give it a, uh, five out of ten. I feel like that's pretty just split down the middle. Would I watch it again? Uh, probably if I ever did a the Marvel movies, I would probably end up rewatching it. Um, is it one of the best Marvel movies of all time? Not really. Did it need to be made? Not really. Again, it's a prequel. Not really much prequels need to be made. This, sadly, doesn't really tell a story that I feel like needed to be told. It, it's cool to learn about Black Widow, but I feel like after Endgame, it kind of doesn't really matter. And that sucks. It would have been cool if this did come out, you know, after Civil War. Like, it seems like it, like it's desperately trying to tell you, like, hey, you know, this is supposed to be after Civil War, and it's like, yeah, okay, cool, but, like, uh, Natasha's dead, you know, lore-wise, so why should I really care? I don't know, that's, that's the one fault, and of course, you know, when that all goes into play of, you know, the politics behind Hollywood and movie making, and the uh, fucking massive sexism that is in that, that, uh, that fucking world. It sucks that the Black Widow movie was delayed this much to the point that it feels unnecessary. I keep saying it's a mixed bag. That doesn't mean it's bad. It's got its bad moments, but it does have its good moments. It just kind of evens out to a solid 5 out of 10. Will I watch the rest of Marvel's Phase 4? Probably not. Uh, the next time you see me talk about a Marvel movie is going to be about uh, No Way Home, because that sounds atrocious, and that sounds disastrous, and I can't wait to talk about it. <laughs>